Is Donald Trump so hated, so polarizing, that a member of the Republican Party would seek to assassinate him? Just one of many questions that are circulating. So much confusion in these hours after the attempted assassination of Donald Trump at the rally in Pennsylvania. Why did a young, white, 20-year-old man take his father's AR-15, climb the roof of a building opposite the rally and fire directly at Donald Trump? And why are the Republicans, many of whom senior Republicans, Congress people, governors, blaming Joe Biden and the Democrats for this action? It's a uh, a confusing time, but but confusion is what the MAGA Republicans have always planned for. We heard Steve Bannon talk about it very early in Donald Trump's presidency. Create as much chaos as possible so people don't know which way is up and which way is down. They don't know whether you're on the goody or the baddie side. They don't know right from wrong. And, and this is what we're seeing play out. Because almost a decade of hate speech from Donald Trump this very explicit language towards minority groups, whether it be immigrants or people of color or LGBTQ people or trans people, after a while, after a while, that the hate speech takes its toll and, and people become so angry and so aggrieved that in, in you know, very few circumstances, somebody might be prepared to go out of their way to do something about it, whether it be to silence the voices, i.e. in this case Donald Trump, or just to be celebrated as a martyr. And that is my concern, is that, you know, martyrdom is now becoming a very big part of the Donald Trump movement, where people see him as a godlike person, and so they will literally give their own life for him. And, and this is something that is, you know, growing. We see this through the evangelical movement that has, you know, been co-opted by, by MAGA Republicans. And it's something that, you know, it would be foolish to deny. So let's talk a little bit about this gunman as more information now has started to appear of this 20-year-old Pennsylvanian man who authorities said tried to assassinate the disgraced former president at the campaign rally in the state on Saturday before the Secret Service agents shot him. Um, it, it's, a, it's a complicated story. It's a confusing story because it's early stages of the investigation. But what we do know is that Thomas Matthew Crooks resided in Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, predominantly white, affluent suburb of Pittsburgh. Uh, public records show that he shared a home with his parents who were licensed behavioral care counselors. Um, and, and actions that Crooks took late in his time as a student at Bethel Park High School offered virtually no hint as to his political leanings. Um, we do see that he registered to vote uh, as a Republican. Uh, he left his affiliation unchanged when he voted in the November 2022 midterm elections, uh, which took place just months after he graduated from Bethel Park High, whereas he was among a group of students to receive a, a National Math and Science Initiative Star Award. Uh, reportedly, he had an account on Discord, the online chat app that began as a space for gamers, but, but gained notoriety in part because the white supremacist who fatally shot 10 people at the grocery in predominantly black neighborhood in Buffalo posted on that same platform about his plans to attack the store. What we're seeing from this young man is somebody who clearly had the desire to thrust himself into the center of the, the, the political world and to become the most famous person on the planet, albeit for a, just a, a few hours as he uh, attempted the assassination of Donald Trump. Now, the, I talk about confusion. We're hearing from uh, people at the rally who are very, very angry, MAGA Republicans and, and senior, senior Republicans, very angry, saying that this is Joe Biden's fault because Joe Biden and the Democrats have been saying that Donald Trump is an authoritarian and a threat to democracy, and so this is what happens. Now, that is ridiculous, and we must be absolutely clear that, that an attempted assassination of Donald Trump does not change the fact that he is an authoritarian, 
He is aligned with the likes of Viktor Orban from Hungary, who he had a meeting with just the other day. He celebrates people like Kim Jong, Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. He sees himself as a dictator. He's admitted that he wants to be a dictator. And you only have to look at his record of four years in office to see how he behaved in a dictatorial fashion, taking away the rights of women, human rights, and just legislating to protect the wealthy, the oligarchs, and the super rich. So, the, you know, we should not be in any doubt who Donald Trump is. And I've always seen Trump as a bit of a coward, aside from him getting out of national service with his bone spurs and everything else. The cowardly moment came after he was shot, where he hit the deck, we saw the Secret Service surround him, and then when he knew that he was safe because other people were going to take the bullet instead of him, he then asked these uh, Secret Service people to wait, wait. You hear it very clearly on the, on the recording. And the reason he did that was because he wanted to show a defiant image. I referred to it yesterday as a Che Guevara moment. He wanted to be photographed as a hero, as a strong man, as a martyr in this moment, knowing that he stood more chance of winning votes and, and fundraising with this image of him being defiant rather than as a, as a, uh, a small man with, with blood on his face. He, he actually put those Secret Service people at risk for longer than was necessary. And, and, you know, they were very keen to take him off the stage. And he said, wait, wait, knowing the cameras were rolling. From what we can see right here, it looks like they are attempting to move him out that he may have been injured. He is holding up his arm. He is pumping his fist, but clearly Secret Service wants to get him out of this situation. Now, what kind of a person would do that? Well, a coward, but also somebody who is a malignant narcissist, somebody who has a personality disorder, somebody who is very mentally compromised and, and self-absorbed. And so my criticism of Donald Trump does not change. It did not surprise me that somebody tried to assassinate him. It might be confusing that that person was a registered Republican. But, you know, two things can be true at the same time. And we have to stop compartmentalizing and trying to put people into a box and saying, well, you're that and, and nothing else. You know, people can have multiple views uh, and people can ultimately spread their interests and their, and their um, allegiance in, in various directions. And it could be the case that this shooter just wanted to be famous for a day. And who only knows what, what he was thinking. And now questions are being asked, obviously, of the um, security services and, and why this shooter was allowed to climb a building opposite the rally and, and have such a direct shot of Donald Trump. Um, we're now also hearing the name of the person who did die in this, aside from the shooter, Corey Comprator, a former fire chief of the Buffalo Township Volunteer Fire Company in Pennsylvania, was identified as the victim who was shot and killed amidst the assassination attempt. His sister, Dawn, said on Facebook he was a hero that shielded his daughters, his wife and girls, just lived through the unthinkable and unimaginable. So obviously we, we spare a thought and we think for, uh, about the families that are affected. We know that there are two other uh, critically ill patients who also were on the receiving end of gunfire. This situation could have been much worse. It could have been like the Las Vegas shooting where bullets r rang out right across the scene. This gun was an AR-15. This gun was the type of weapon that um, MAGA Republican Congress people wear as pins on their lapels and on their ties. This is the, the same type of weapon of war that Congress people have posed for photographs holding as Christmas cards with their children holding them as well. I'm referring to Lauren Boebert, of course, and we've seen it from, from multiple Congress people who think it's funny and clever to celebrate their Second Amendment rights with these automatic weapons, these, these very, very dangerous guns. The Democrats are trying to ban these 
types of weapons and they're also advocating for gun safety legislation which is actually something that is wanted across the land most people in their right mind want gun safety legislation not taking away your guns but legislating to make them safer so that everybody has a trace on who owns them and that they are not sold to people who might abuse them and 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 yet donald trump who you know is supported by the national rifle association has now been on the receiving end of one of these weapons of war and so questions will of course be asked as to whether or not he might change his position on gun ownership and gun control we can have sympathy for donald trump despite him being a, a republican our, our humanity overwhelms our politics and we've heard that from joe biden we've heard that from all senior democrats and and you know we offer our sympathies because nobody should be killed or attempted to be killed in the line of electioneering and and doing politics and and this is what democracy is this is the ability to have political discourse without fearing for your life and we see that in other countries that's not the way we want to do it here tragically that is what donald trump project 2025 the heritage foundation the federalist society and all of these groups advocate for and joe biden tried to make the point in his address after the incident yesterday that we have to unite this is an opportunity to unite in the same way that covid 19 was an opportunity for the country to unite and america failed because donald trump politicized the the pandemic because it was an election year i have no doubt that donald trump will politicize this event he will use it to fundraise he will use it to electioneer and he will use it to his advantage you know he with his personality disorder his malignant narcissism he will not be thinking about the things that you and i might be thinking about here about the the victims the potential additional loss of life that that could have you know it could have been far worse he won't think about those things he'll think about what can he get from this how can he use this to his advantage and that fundamentally is wrong that is why he is the wrong person to lead this country donald trump is a dangerous uh, dictator who should not be president and i personally don't think that this incident despite the way the media are presenting it and saying oh well he's got the election in the bag now you know why would people say that why would people assume that just because he is the target of, of an assassination attempt that suddenly all of his um rhetoric can be ignored and that you know suddenly he's a safe pair of hands to to be president of the united states again you know, I, I am absolutely clear about the fact that Joe Biden is the only person that advocates for freedom and a, a safe democracy. Donald Trump is not that, and that has not changed. I'm Anthony Davis. You can catch me on the 5 Minute News YouTube channel and podcast on Wednesdays co-hosting Uncovered and on Sunday on The Weekend Show with Midas Touch.